Welcome back to episode 6 of A Very Welsh Park. Did you know it was my birthday last week? Yes, I'm officially a 30 year old man being paid to play video games. No, it doesn't get any better than this. Also, your card hasn't arrived yet, so I'm guessing it's just um, lost in the post or something? Today we're kicking things off with another flat ride. Before you get too excited, it's only a KMG Vortex, although don't tell the ride I said that, I don't want to hurt its feelings. Also, yes, I said Vortex. I received a comment on an episode of A Very British Park rightly stating that the Afterburner has six gondolas, whereas this, the Vortex, has eight. Thanks, nerd. After doing some cheeky path work, I started on a custom fence using haunted house pillars, ensuring to rotate each one to avoid repeating textures. With a sensible sized group of fluctuating posts, I could then copy and paste around the perimeter of the ride. To add some variation to the queue, I used the painted western fences in a lovely pastel green. Along with our food court, Big Bite, this flat ride will also be part of the green zone. I disguised the end of the fence in a wooden pillar to blend in with the rest. He does believe he's a haunted house pillar though, and to be honest, he's entitled to be whatever he wants to be. With the queue complete, I could then do a spot of terrain painting. I stole the ride sign from Timber Falls before giving our vortex a name. And what is that name? I'm literally about to tell you, so calm yourself. Inspired by its in-game name and extending our adventure theme, I went with The Claw. I'm sure a lot of you have been screaming about the lack of actual Welsh things in our very Welsh park so far. So get ready, because we're about to Welsh things up, starting with some Welsh cakes. For those who don't know, Welsh cakes are a type of sweetbread, similar to a scone. And no, I'm not starting the scone-scone debate, that's for another day. A day that will never come. I wanted to go for a nice simple shack. Nothing too fancy considering our food court is just across the way. For the shop I went with Sugar Emporium, and for the build I used natural wood, corrugated iron, columns, beams and pillars.
For the sign I used TMTK letters, art shapes and I drew beams reflecting the Welsh flag. I did my best to hide the Sugar Emporium branding before repurposing a TMTK donut menu. Is this Welsh enough for you yet? As you will have noticed, I made a little cubby to the right of the shop. This will house a few vending machines, the two functioning ones being donuts and marshmallows for all your sugary needs. Being a flimsy wooden shack, there wouldn't be any internal wiring, so all cabling for these machines would be visible. Time for some detailing. I added some CCTV, bins and general clutter. Oh, I also remembered to add a door considering the park won't be hiring any ghosts. Moving on and moving up. For our next ride, I decided to create a raised plaza. After doing the terrain and pathing off camera, I added a concrete foundation with a Victorian tile floor. As you can see, this took a lot of fiddling to get right, but the final result was worth it. After a stubborn piece of terrain wouldn't budge, I had to readjust everything once again. Goodness, the lengths I go to. Nobody likes plain concrete, so I wrapped the whole thing in a custom wooden stake cladding. Best avoid tripping anywhere near those spikes, else we may end up with a hot fuzz incident. I'm not risking demonetization by showing the end of that clip, but I think we all know how it ends whether you've seen the film or not. Although if you haven't seen Hot Fuzz, I'm not completely sure we can be friends. Considering this plaza lines up wonderfully with Hawatson's brake run, it made sense to add some maintenance access. I continued the chain link along the remainder of the plaza that runs alongside the coaster track.
I joined the two sections of fence with a metal support, but doubled it up as the base to a CCTV camera. Considering this marks the start of the yellow zone, I suppose we should add some yellow. Although yellow is terribly garish, so I went with gold. I guess this is now the gold zone. What a shambles. With this being a kiddie ride, it felt like a nice place for the grown-ups to chill out, so I added some benches and pretty foliage. Our ride of course needs a name, and what better name to really push those Welsh vibes than the official flower of Wales, the daffodil. The ride also looks a bit like a flower, so you know, it works. Running parallel to our plaza is the final section of the dive coaster, and with that, a lovely little dip below ground level. I took this opportunity to add a cute little bridge. As I mentioned in my How To Be Good At Planet Coaster video, a key aspect of making unique builds is to hide as much of the default Planco stuff as possible. I covered every inch of the path using various types of wood. Who wants to see custom coaster supporting when you've got custom bridge supporting? How I wish there were 1 meter haunted house pillars, but sadly my dreams have been crushed. I swapped these for the standard wooden ones. Yes, I even covered the steps themselves. What a madman. I added some safety knitting to stop silly folks from dropping their tiny phones onto the track due to the sheer excitement of the passing coaster. If you're into your horticulture, get ready, because we're about to go rock and foliage crazy.
When it came to the plant life, I started with the rather dead looking creosote down on the water level and slowly progressed in life the further up I went. At this point I got distracted by the fact our brake run access was actually intersecting with the train cars, tut tut. I removed a couple of fences and laid some hazard strips to turn it into a ride evacuation point instead. Ok, if the bridge supports weren't enough for you, here's me doing a single coaster support, you're welcome. As unattractive as Chainlink can be, this is an active ride area, so it's a necessary evil. I did cheer it up with some wooden posts though, how delightful! Time for a few TMTK details including these lovely kiosks which were coincidentally already coloured to match our area. There is however a slight scale issue between them and the animatronic people manning them, so they had to be buried slightly into the ground, sorry chaps. Back down the slope, I filled in the rest of the empty space with trees and bushes. I probably should have said at the start, but this marks our slight transition away from adventure and into nature. Although I am writing this script knowing full well I could have told you at the start of the episode. But yet, here I am still tapping away without a care in the world, blah blah blah, tap tap tap. We're all about those details that nobody will ever see, so I added a strip of concrete around the base of the plaza completely hidden by fences, you're welcome. I added even more nature to our plaza in the form of these lovely planters matching the roundabout centrepiece out front. Finally, as always, I added some simple lighting, including the usual area light -like glow from the shop and vending machines. And just like that, another episode is over. Crikey. If this episode wasn't high octane enough for you, next week we add a family track ride. I know, it's going to be unbearably thrilling. See you then. <laughs>